Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Topps Chrome Baseball Platinum Anniversary Edition. 12 box picker team number one in all card ship. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. I think a lot of, a lot of 1952 looking cards here. That looks pretty cool. 700 card base set featuring players from throughout 70 years of Topps Baseball. A lot of parallels. Chrome Autograph East Box has one autograph. So we're looking for 12 autographs in here on average, as they as they like to say. So big thanks to everybody here for making this happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here on Wednesday the 29th, brand new release, Hump Day. Eric ended up with Last Bond Mojo before we uh, pulled the team to the fillers. So if you see a rooftop next to your name, that means you won that team in a filler. If you have two rooftops next to your name, like Adam, Adam won the extra spot in the filler, then won the Padres because of that extra spot. So good parlay there, Adam. And everyone else, thank you very much. Appreciate everybody making this happen on brand new release day. All right, so let's see what we got. Rex said he saw a box break of this a little bit ago. They're nice looking cards. Good. Uh, 1952 design is a classic. I wonder if this is, this, this is probably the only year they're doing this, right? They're not gonna do one next year. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what we got here. Good luck, everyone. Eddie Alvarez of the Dodgers. Some of you may or may not know that he was an Olympian, an Olympic speed skater, won the silver medal for us, for the United States, um, in Sochi, I believe, back in 2014. Oh, you know what? I was watching this game. I don't need the highlights. Let's flip over to the White Sox at Angels game. I have some financial interest in the, in the White Sox. It's the top of the sixth. They're down to nothing. Oh, Tani still on the mound. He's at 105 pitches. So I'm hoping that the Angels bullpen messes this up. Let's go, Angels bullpen. Do what you like to do. Although I do have Otani on my fantasy team, so I don't know what I. Yeah, I want. That's what I want. I want Otani. I don't necessarily need W's in my fantasy league. But I like I like the start that Otani's making here. 5.1 innings. There's one out in the sixth. No earned runs. One walk, 10 Ks. Woo! I like that. So I want him to go through six. And then I need the uh, the Angels bullpen to blow it in the seventh or eighth and or ninth inning. Top of the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Currently, Gavin Sheets is up to bat. We got a man on first. I don't know who's on first. What's on second? Ooh, got the strikeout. 11 strikeouts. Angels are in their uh, their City Connect jerseys by Nike, which I have to admit, look kind of cool. All right, there's Eddie Alvarez. We're just talking. He's on the Dodgers now. But he was a, a yes yeah, silver medal winning speed skater. That'll go to the Marlins. That's for Aaron. All right. So these, of course, are facsimile autographs, as as we noticed back in, as we know from back in the day. Here's Al Lopez, uh, not numbered, but a cool wave parallel here. There's the Dustin May refractor. 
And we've got a Willie McCovey Sparkle Speckle card, 70 out of 70. That's for the Giants. That will be for Adam. And that's what the real autographs look like. They'll be in blue ink. Ruben Sierra. Remember Ruben Sierra? 34 out of 150. That is pretty sharp. I, I like the, the color of the parallel with the 1952 design. That's how you know that design's a classic where it still looks good in 2022. I dig it. I like it. Rangers. Lonnie with the Rangers. And we've got to 25, Robinson Cano Orange. That looks really cool. Now, Logan does not remember Ruben Sierra. Uh, that's Adam with the Mets gets the Cano to 25. Jonathan Stiver, uh, checkerboard, not numbered, but all card chip. All right, first box in the books, nice start. Next box. All right, so all games are a final except for this White Sox-Angels game, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to any uh, White Sox fans who might be listening. We'll keep you company throughout this game. I think this might be the free game on MLB.tv if you want to watch along with us. Final scores, Dodgers beat the Rockies 8-4. Got the game in before the rain started really coming down. Cubs beat the Reds 8-3. Marlins edged out the Cardinals 4-3. Guardians winning an extras. One, walked it off against the Twins 7-6. Uh, Red Sox also an extras, but this time the Red Sox on the road beat the Blue Jays 6-5. Blue Jays were not able to walk it off. Verdugo lifting the Red Sox in extras with a two-run double. Who got the walk off? Oh, Josh Naylor got the walk off for the Guardians. Obviously, Garcia had a clutch two on a homer for the Marlins in their victory. And uh, Christopher Morell crushes the homer on a, on a full count. So he's got a homer on the day. I think I had him on the bench. I needed that, could have used that home run. Uh, Phillies uh, fell to the Braves. Atlanta won 4 1. Duvall unloaded a 402 moonshot to the moon to extend the Braves' lead. Rodriguez, Julio Rodriguez crushed a homer to extend the Mariners' lead. They beat the Orioles 9-3. ESPN does not have like a little highlight video. I guess nothing happened in the Tigers-Giants game. Tigers beat the Giants 3-2. Must have been a boring one. All right, Padres shut out the Diamondbacks. 4 to 0. Padre snap a three game slide with a little small ball. Diamondbacks only managing three hits. Royals beat the Rangers 2 1. Kyle Isbell hitting a solo shot, putting the Royals ahead. Must have been a boring day in uh, New York. Mets were two hit. Astros beat the uh, Mets 2 0. No video thumbnail in the on ESPN. Yeah, that's right, Angels bullpen. White Sox have men on first and third now. Yes. And there's the autograph. Leody Tavares, rookie autograph for the Rangers. Nestor with Texas. The Easy E favorite team was White Sox was the White Sox? Easy E the musician? Pirates 
beat the uh, Nationals 8-7. Josh Hader, Blue Wave for the Brew Crew. So we got the one auto. Let's see if we can find some more parallels. There's the refractor. The refractors, by the way, are not numbered. But everything ships. This is numbered 182 to 199. Tyler Glass now blue speckle. Oh, is that right? And straight out of Compton, he wears the White Sox hat. The logo was not even out back then. Ahead of his time. Maybe that was just some uh, sharp marketing. There's JT Real Muto. Maybe someone on the marketing team was like, we'll, we'll slip some of these hats to Eze. -E. He'll wear them out. They'll make them look cool. There's Roberto Alomar, 80 out of 99. For the Blue Jays, that'll be for Adam. Aaron Judge, 29th home run today. The Yankees beat the A's 5-3. Brewers beat the Rays 5-3 as well. And we're only live game on in America is Angels at White Sox. White Sox at Angels, that is. Obviously, Garcia up to bat with two outs. Got runners on first and third in the top of the sixth. Joe has... Some financial interest in the White Sox, which is why he cares so much about this game. Keeps it interesting, makes me watch the games. I mean, I'd probably watch it anyway, but you know, a little extra juice, a little extra rooting interest. These packs open up real smooth. This is like, feels like pre pandemic manufacturing here. I like it. They, they, I, I guess they got the supply chain sorted out for for this release here. The pack, the thickness of the pack itself feels nice, not too thin, not too thick. The adhesive is applied perfectly. Ground out, damn. This pack can open up real smooth, real nice. Corey Seager sold Dodgers edition here. Luke Voigt. Daryl Strawberry, the straw man for the Mets. And 25 out of 99, there he is again, Daryl Strawberry. That's for Adam and the Metropolitans. I think the, the, the sort of, what they call it, the step and repeat in the background is like the 70th Tops logo, it looks like. Looking for Blue Wing. These are all facsimile autographs. 27 out of 199, John Cruck. Blue Sparkle. I can, I can imagine some kid opening this up and thinking that every card is an autograph. They're going to learn that they're facsimile autographs. Tim Salmon, those are some classic Angels uniforms there. There it is. Ooh, Ken Griffey Sr. Red Legs. That's going to go to Rick T. in Cincinnati. And I'll do an autograph recap at the end along with any other 
sort of lower numbered cards, like 25 and under. We'll highlight those as well. All right, next box. Tani up to bat. Did Otani strain something? He said, why are you pounding on your lower back, Otani? Don't do that. There's a nice little slider. Fouled it off. and It's a big hack, yeah. There's Michael Kopech. He's on the mound right now trying to get Shoei Otani out. Two and two. Oh, Tony fouls it off. And Paul O'Neill. Nice Paul O'Neill autograph for the Yankees. Adam Kupperman got the Yankees straight up. Nice. The pitch, Kopech strikes out Otani. That was a nice pitch. What was it just like a middle, middle heater? 95 miles per hour. It's Castillo. Where does Luis Castillo end up? I think he's definitely, definitely? He's on the trading, I think people are speculating he's on the trading block. It's Wade Boggs, 156 out of 199. Blue Speckle for Boston, John. That's right, Rebel. Even with the pulled muscle, Otani will muscle through it. Oof, it's Walsh with a single. It's kind of cool seeing, seeing the babe in this shot right here. All card ship. Jared Weaver. And this is a really fun set. It's pretty off center right here. It's a pretty fun set here. I'm digging it. Was there a 2020 version of this product? No. Because in 2020, it was not their platinum anniversary. That's why. So this might 
Might be the only year they do. I mean, unless they find a platinum anniversary for a different set. I guess next year would be the 1953 Topps Baseball Platinum Anniversary, so maybe they'll keep going with it, but... Oh, no. Luis Rangifo with a two-run shot. Come on, Michael Kopech. Now they're, now they're up 4 nothing. Michael Kopech doesn't care that I have uh, that I financial interest in his team winning. Come on, Mike. Thought we were buddies. It's not like I, I don't even have Rangifo on my fantasy team. Although Walsh gets a run scored. I'll take it. I think Michael Kopech got Otani out and he was like, I got this. I'm going to cruise through the rest of the inning. And just gave, what is that, a hanging, little hanging slider right over the middle. That's that's it for him. So far so good, Rex. Paul O'Neill, Ken Griffey Sr., Leody Tavares, Cano Orange, and a Ruben Sierra to start things off. We still have many more to go. And we've got Julio Franco. Remember Julio Franco? This is Guardians edition, well, Indians back in the day. Cleveland, this is for you. Goes to Adam. He had a pretty distinctive, uh, I feel like he had a pretty distinctive batting stance, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Product reminds you of cross between heritage, chrome, and archives. Huh. You know what this product reminds me of, Rex? Uh, 1952 tops. That's what it reminds me of. 71 out of 100, Mo Vaughn. Atomic. Red Sox, that's going to be for John. And we got a, is that our second autograph of the box? It was Julio Franco first and Nick Madrigal. Gold auto for the White Sox. And that's for Kayshawn Chang. I think I saw him earlier with the White Sox. 28 out of 50. And David Fletcher for the Halos. Man, Kopech was cruising in this game too. Nick Madrigal in this game? We just got his auto. No, Nick Ma that's White Sox edition, but Nick Madrigal is a Cub now. That's right. How did Nick Madrigal do today with the Cubbies? Let's find out. He was not in the lineup today. All right, next box. It's always a fun time to check the uh, Rookie of the Year odds. In the AL, your 2022 AL Rookie of the Year favorite, Julio Rodriguez. A... Uh, a, a, a big favorite, actually. Minus 130. 
which is a lot for these futures odds, in my opinion. Jeremy Pena is plus 400. Bobby Wood Jr. plus 550. And then it jumps up to Joe Ryan plus 2,500. That's 25 to 1. So, looks like, according to Vegas, they're liking Julio Rodriguez a lot. And maybe Jeremy Pena, Bobby Wood Jr. might have an outside chance. In the NL, the according to uh, sportsbettingdime.com, I think they're using MGM odds. Uh, the favorite to win the NL Rookie of the Year. That's it's a little more murky here. Mackenzie Gore is plus four fifty. Michael Harris is plus four fifty. O'Neill Cruz is plus four fifty. Nolan Gorman plus 480, and then it jumps to 10 to 1. Spencer Strider, say a Suzuki 15 to 1. Sawinski 15 to 1. Alec Thomas 20 to 1, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, Rex, we got Christopher Morell finally on this list. Christopher Morell, they're 35 to 1, plus 3,500. I think the other week when we looked at this very same list, he was not yet on there. There's Mookie Betts. Sixty-five out of one ninety-nine. Luke Voigt, blue sparkle speckle for Adam and the Yankees. Anyone have any thoughts on rookies of the year? Who's gonna win it? Looks like the AL is all but set for now, at this moment anyway. Don't we have a, oh, I was going to say, don't we have a Lonnie Smith in this break? I think we have a Nick Smith and a Lonnie Cornet. And 37 out of 70, Ken Giles for Seattle. That'll be for Aaron. Do we not see? I don't think we saw an autograph in here. I guess I guess that we had that extra auto. All right, next box. We're halfway through this full case break. We're about the 30 minute marks. So we got about another 30 or so to go. I do feel like I'm dragging a little bit here though towards the end of this end of my evening. Yeah, O'Neill Cruz did indeed hit his first home run recently. Yeah, it looks like there's no clear cut favorite in the NL. So it really does seem like Julio Rodriguez is running away with it in the AL. But no clear cut favorite in the in the NL. So, yeah, I mean, there could be some value value in, say, a Suzuki at 15 to 1, Rex. You know, I don't think there's too much value in, like, it's hard for me. I feel like NL Rookie of the Year leans, is, an, is like an offensive award, essentially, right? The pitchers in the last 10 years to win Rookie of the Year, Jose Fernandez, RIP, in 2013, Jacob deGrom in 2014, and that's it. Oh, and then Devin Williams won in 2020. That's it. Three pitchers have won in the last 10 years. So my guess is that it's going to be an offensive player, right? So is there any value in Michael Harris, O'Neill Cruz, Nolan Gorman? Sure. But, and I don't play futures too often. I'm too impatient for futures, but, but I, but you know, I do look for value. So if you're looking for value, you got to try to see guys in the, you know, the 10 to 1 range, if not higher. 
So maybe that's Spencer Strider, say a Suzuki, Sawinski, Alec Thomas. People love the long ball, right? Jack Sawinski has been has been uh, popping a lot of homers. That's not a bad pick at plus 1,500. 15 to 1, you know? Let's put 5 or 10 bucks on that. You know? What about... I don't know. And then maybe at like 60 to 1, does that get too much? I feel like that gets to be a little too much right here. 60 to 1, Contreras, CJ Abrams, Hunter Green, Libertor, Gonzalez, Stott, Meyer, Cabrera, Lodolo. Christopher Mor Morell actually could be an interesting flyer at plus 3,500. You know, you're not putting a lot down on that, but could be interesting depending on whatever your budget is. And for the Royals, Chris Bubich. Speaking of the Royals, Rebels, like, I don't understand how J-Rod is so far. He's almost identical stats as Bobby Wood Jr., but Bobby Jr. has four less games and 11 plate appearances. He has 12 more hits. Uh, that's Dan with the Royals. There's Daniel Murphy to 199 for the Rockies. That's going to go to Nestor. Uh, there isn't a stat, but I'm sure we can look it up. Unlike the MVP award, I feel like the Rookie of the Year award is not tied to a playoff appearance as, as much as MVP would be. Or even Cy Young to a certain extent. 75, Josh Reddick. I think there's a little, little gold schmutz right there. But that's for Aaron and the Strohs. Might be able to clean that up a little bit. It's Will Smith. He's been hitting real well. Real will well. Come on, White Sox. Let's see, Rebel. I'm looking up these guys right now. So Julio has two point. His war is 2-9 for some reason. And Bobby Witt Jr.'s wins above replacement is only one. But Julio has 78 hits. Bobby Witt has 66 hits. Witt has 11 home runs. Julio has 11 home runs. I mean, Julio Rodriguez is batting 276, about 30 points higher than Bobby Witt. They're both some speedy guys, too. RBI numbers are pretty similar. I'm trying to look at defensively, maybe. Is, someone, is one of these guys leaning more defensively better than the other? You know, I, I think Julio Rodriguez is, I mean, he's an outfielder, but his fielding percentage is slightly better. But the, according to baseball reference, their wins above replacement is considerably different. So there must be some underlying metric here somewhere. Maybe, the, maybe that average. That's, uh, that's making something different there.
And with Vegas odds, it's not always a it's not always a perfect comparison to the stats as well. There just may be more public money going into Julio Rodriguez, right? So like maybe maybe more public betters are putting dumping a lot of money to Julio Rodriguez and driving the price down into favorite range. So Vegas a lot like the you know maybe similar to stocks. It's like maybe they're they're gonna take the other they want to lower those odds so their their exposure to Julio Rodriguez payouts are a lot lower. So that might be something that they're that they're doing. But that WAR number is pre is pretty different. It's almost uh, Julio Rodriguez like, according to Baseball Reference his WAR is almost one full point higher than Bobby Witt Jr.'s this season. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm with you. I, I wouldn't think that just 12 hits and maybe a 30-point batting average difference would make that much of a... I mean, he, he has stolen a f seven more bases, I think, six or seven more bases. So maybe all those little things maybe maybe add up to that kind of, that kind of difference. Otherwise, I mean... If we had a little more time, I I dive into it a little bit more, but I'm just I'm just kind of doing this at a glance. Right? Yeah. I mean, Rebels pointing out that hey, Bobby Wood Jr. hasn't played some very good defense, some blunders, but nothing major. And right, his fielding percentage as a shortstop, you know, it's you know the degree of difficulty is much higher. 87 out of 199, Tommy Edmond. Everyone hear about uh, Steve Sachs' son. Very sad story. Steve Sachs' son is a is a Marine. I, I think he he's not his son is not young either. He's kind of an older. Maybe, maybe I don't know what his rank was, but uh, son passed away in a training exercise helicopter crash a couple weeks ago. Steve Rogers, one twenty eight out of one ninety nine. Expos Expo stuff goes to the Nationals. That'll be for Lonnie. Yuma, right, Joe P? Yeah, sad story. Not a helicopter crash, wasn't it? Isn't it that weird, um, that weird plane slash helicopter where the where the things rotate up and down? I forget what that's called. An osprey, a raptor. The propellers they can go land up vertically, but then once it's in the sky, they can it. Switches to a front going, front going. I know what it is. And it's, I don't have the terms. I don't have the vocabulary for it. But yeah, it goes front ways, and apparently, those things have a sort of rough sort of maintenance record. I want to say so. So, bummer. And he's, he wasn't a young kid either. He's a captain. He's 33 years old. So, I mean, he's been doing this for a while. Yeah, all over local news here in Los Angeles. Steve Sachs was a pretty popular, still is a popular player here, especially amongst the old school guys in L.A. Yeah, John J. Sachs, Captain John J. Sachs, R.I.P.
I think they were probably flying out of out of Camp Pendleton, right? And then Yuma's right on the the California Arizona border. If you take the eight freeway, is it Joe? You take the eight straight out there, it'll it'll hit Yuma right on the border. It's a large stretch of desert there. Nothing really going on out there. Once you're past El Cajon in East County, San Diego, it's a lonely stretch of road. You, it's fun to speed down that uh, down that highway. The the 15 freeway on the way from LA to Vegas used to be really lonely, but since it's on the way to Vegas over the over the years, um, over the years they they've like little small towns and rest stops and convenience stores have grown over there so there's a lot of places to to stop that eight freeway out of san diego through to to arizona that is real desolate it still is oh was there another incident in yuma yeah the the Steve Sachs' son one I thought was close to Arizona as well, but maybe not. There's another one, Glam yeah, Glamis, California. Isn't that close to Arizona? Somewhere in the desert out there. They, the Camp Pendleton is right north county, San Diego, so there's a lot of a lot of activity happening there. Hey, I remember Justin Morneau? Big first baseman for the Twins. That's going to go to Adam with Minnesota. Crushing weekend, yeah, it's a brutal drive from San Diego all the way to Tucson. Yeah, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of, th keep the window open, blast the music, you know, kind of road just to try to stay awake if you're doing that solo. Out of 100, Trent Grisham, Cracked Ice. No, atomic. Tops will call this atomic. This is for Padres. Uh, this is for Adam. AK. Ronald Acuna Jr. And another parallel. That's Max Scherzer Nationals edition for Lonnie. Exactly, weekends. Yeah, people don't realize. Once you're out of LA, Orange County, San Diego. A lot of desert for miles and miles and miles. Or that drive up the Central Valley, the San Joaquin Valley, just long stretches of farmland for as far as the eye can see. Gosh, it was there, those accents were a day apart, Joe? That's terrible. But the four in the Yuma crash survived. All right, oh, that's good. Yeah, I've never actually been at Kemp Pendleton, but they do have a, I don't know if they still do it, they do have the, uh, the, the Camp Pendleton Mud Run, which I've always wanted to do, but never have. It's through parts of like the big obstacle course that they have for basic over there. You get to run through a bunch of mud and it's like a 10K and, and uh, apparently it's really fun, but I uh, yet to do that I have seen I went to school in San Diego so I, I, I know that area pretty well I went up driving up and down from San Diego to LA I've seen like helicopter training exercises on the beach which is cool one time they have um, I'm, I'm blanking on what they're called someone will tell me what it is but like a hovercraft I think they have a hovercraft unit stationed there and I've seen some of those in action, just driving up and down the coast. Those are awesome. I want to drive one of those. Diego's, yeah, I've done that Death Valley drive. That Death Valley drive is uh, pretty sparse.
what happens a lot in Camp Ellington? Accidents? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the risk. That's the risk of the job. They're more brave than I am. I think those hovercrafts there, though, I think are just, uh, I don't know if they're actually in, uh, I don't know if they actually are like attack hovercraft. I think they like just transport stuff around. They might have a, a gun on there, but. They must have some attack hovercrafts, right? In my head, I'm 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 envisioning some sort of uh, some sort of crazy GI Joe type military transport device that shoots off a bunch of missiles and stuff. Spencer Howard. Arnie Banks. Yeah, Joe P, but it's it's a dry heat though in Death Valley. 122, but a dry heat. I can manage a dry heat. We got Wilson Contreras, Atomic for the Cubs, that'll be for Lonnie. Vegas can touch 120s. I, I've, I've been in Vegas when it's touched 120. It's a dry heat. And there's Bucky Dent. Remember old Bucky Dent? Yeah, the humidity. Now, Diego's in San Antonio right now. He's like, this humidity ain't no joke. Humidity, that... I can't do that. That That is... Uh, this is for Adam... Picked up the Yankee straight up. Yeah. Humidity, I just can't do. That's. I've, I've tried it. Different places, different times. Not my thing. Tucker Davidson, Orange Wave. Uh, Chris Parent and the Braves. That Orange Wave looks really, looks really sharp. Yeah, Indiana humidity can't do that. That Midwest humidity, yeah, it's probably because we're used to it, right? Joe P and Diego are in a uh, in Arizona. Well, Diego's in San Antonio right now, but I grew up in Southern California, and that's, that's really more of a desert climate. Um, San Diego, like, I guess, more of a Mediterranean kind of kind of climate. I think if you follow the whatever the longitude or latitude of, around the world, but. But uh, I went to, uh, remember uh, years ago, after the National in Chicago, I, I took a little quick little trip out to the Field of Dreams just to check it out. And, and, uh, and that was in, what, late July, or early August? And I knew it was going to be warm. I, I guess just haven't spent too much time in the Midwest. I guess I just didn't realize what the humidity was going to be like. And so now I'm in a in a standing in a baseball field in the middle of a cornfield in the flatlands of uh, of the of the Midwest, in Great Plains, and I'm a uh, and it wasn't temperature wise. I don't think it was very hot. I think it was like eighty something. But the humidity was a real deal. I was, I was just like. Drenched. All right, second to last box, gang. Almost there. Stay on target. Joe P or anyone in hot climates. 
Has anyone uh, cooked an egg on a on a sidewalk or on the hood of a car? There's Mike Rousseau, speckle to 75, almost like a peach champagne speckle there, something like that. They have a name for it. Rays, that'll be for Lonnie and Dave Parker. I think part of the part of the old uh, late 70s, that popular pirates organization. Mark Miller with Pittsburgh, six out of 70. Joe P has cooked an egg on a sidewalk or maybe a, the hood of a car. Rebel did too when he was in Arizona. Twenty-four out of one ninety-nine. Mark Teixeira, Yankees edition. Well, Logan's saying you can bake cookies on the dash dashboard. Is it, has anyone monetized that car cookies? Baked fresh in in my car. It's like, wow, your car smells delicious. What what air freshener are you using? No, that's I'm just baking cookies. That's all. That's, yeah, that five minutes. I mean, you kind of have to, in the heat, I feel like you just have to leave the door open for like five minutes, roll all the windows down, try to get some sort of air circulation in there. Logan says a mailman in Arizona cooked a steak on the dash of his mail truck on YouTube. Is that allowed? Is that where my taxpayer dollars are going for someone to cook a, cook a steak in a mail truck? I'm a hard-working American citizen. We got guys cooking steaks in mail trucks. Yeah, you got to crack the windows open a little bit when you park. Try to get some kind of circulation going. Ah, that's a good call. If your car has remote start, J Dog is saying, you can set it, uh, set the AC. Okay, yeah, I guess fancy cars now. J Dog has a fancy car, but yeah, I'll bet I'll bet that te technology is really helpful. Wait, you guys don't don't have AC in your mail trucks? Why, why aren't my tax dollars going into, into AC for the mail? All right, Diego can't afford remote start. Spent all his money on chess fees. There are worse things my tax, this is true. This is true, this goes, Joe P's pockets. Thanks, Diego. Appreciate appreciate the help. <laughs> You're welcome, Joe P. Just know that every dollar I make here, Joe P, a little bit part of that goes to Logan and to Joe P and anyone employed by our federal government. You're welcome. We're just we're just helping the economy. That's all. And then you join our group breaks. And there's Matt Olson, is our final autograph. I think Diego's a school teacher, right? 123 out of 150. There, there's, there's federal funding that goes to school. So the money you put into me, Diego, I'm sure some, you know, the money I make, portion of it ends up back to you at some point. You know, and as a, as a regular voter, you know, I'm always I'm always supporting the teachers. So there you go. See? 
beautiful. This is how it should be. This is a, this is a small example of how 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 easy things could be. There's Max Free. Goes to the kids, right, Diego? And without the kids, there'd be no teachers. <laughs> so it kind of goes to you too. Four out of ten, Max Freed. Max fry, fry, fried egg on a dashboard. Going to Chris Parent. See, it all comes full circle. Max Freed, Max Fried, Fried Egg. 27 out of 199, Kike Hernandez. I miss Kike. He's on a one-year deal. Maybe he'll come back to the Dodgers. Red Sox, John, with that one. Good utility guy. And what else? I think we'll find a parallel here. There's Mitch White. There's Matthew Boyd. There's Dave Stewart. There's Alfonso Soriano. I think the last guy that got close to... The closest to a 50-50 season. I don't know if that's going to happen. Eddie, uh, Eddie Alvarez. He's with the Dodgers now. He was a speed skater. Won silver for us in 2014. 5,000-meter relay. We looked it up earlier on a... On the Wikipedia. And Gio Urshela, Yankees edition, closes things out. There you go, boys and girls. Um, that was actually pretty fun. 22, I didn't know what to expect. It was with the Platinum Anniversary release, a brand new release, but 2021 Tops Chrome Baseball Platinum Anniversary. This was Pick Your Team 1. We got more in the store. Check it out. I like the parallels are pretty nice. The 1952 design is also really sharp. Some nice uh, old school autographs. Rookie autographs, vet autographs, retired player autographs, some fun parallels here too. Nice clean, uh, clean stuff here. So, get into it. I don't think it's. I'll have to check. I want to say the price point, the entry point for this, relative to other products, aren't aren't isn't super expensive as well. So it's kind of a fun break to get into. An all card ship. So all these beautiful 1952 design cards will be going your way as well. Uh, anything else I need to do here? No randomizer at the end? Great. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.